So I'm 14 years old and my parents enroll me in a jazz camp and I'm surrounded by jazz bros and one of the bros puts on this. Now, if I'm honest, I thought someone was playing a practical joke on me. It sounded ridiculous. Like it sounded completely random, but I look around the room and everybody's like, oh, 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 just totally grooving to it. Loving it so much saying things like, oh, this cat is killing. And I was like, yeah, this cat really is killing. I just wanted to fit in. I just wanted to be like one of the jazz bros. But if I'm honest, Donna Lee from Jaco Pastorius' self-titled debut record sounded like garbage to me. No, <gasps> no. It was such a cognitive dissonance as I grew up because everybody was talking about how much they loved Jocko and I just didn't get it. I was waiting for someone to jump out and be like, just kidding, and then play like Can't Get Enough by Winger. So I did what any inexperienced, self-conscious teenage musician would do. I pretended to like it. And secretly, it was so damn traumatizing that I swore off Jocko. And I used the excuse that I didn't want him to influence my sound. But really, I was terrified of the music and I was ashamed that I didn't get it. Now, I did eventually come around. Years later, I landed a cool teaching gig and I had to dig into this music. It was the thing that was weighing on me. I had to understand Jaco Pastorius. And once I really dug in, slowed it down, took it bar by bar, I fell in love. And as an educator, my goal became to make this music accessible. So if you're a closet Jaco hater, take my hand. I am Ian Martin Allison for SBL, and in honor of the 35th anniversary of Jocko's tragic passing, welcome to Bass Albums That Changed Music, Jocko Pastorius' self-titled debut album. Track one, you guessed it, it's Donna Lee. Written by Charlie Parker and Miles Davis, Donna Lee is a tour de force of bebop language, and it was a bold move to come out of the gate in 1976 with an electric bass player just playing the head and a solo accompanied by kungas. It blew everybody's mind. Well, I mean, it confused mine. <laughs> but Jocko had this unbelievable sound and approach, and he was playing the bass like a lead instrument. Now, on the channel, Scott has broken down this head before, and Danny Moe did this super cool, almost funk breakdown of it with his band. Both of those videos are linked in the description. So instead of taking you through the whole head, I'm actually going to give you what made this song make sense to me. When I heard it outside of the context of harmony, it made zero sense. So I'm going to sneak in on this session and subtly comp chords behind Jocko and Don, and hopefully that will help you hear this beautiful melody. tempo is absolutely blazing, but hopefully those chords help put that melody into perspective. Now, I would be remiss to move on from Donna Lee without giving you a little bit of the head. My favorite part is this amazing thing that Parker, Miles, Jocko play in the minor section of the tune, right? When it's in this tonality near the end. This line... I love how this chromatic line connects to the chords. Like that third of the C7 chord, so hip. That is one of my favorite lines. And then the wrap up. And when you play it fast, you have to swing it a little less. When it's slow. feels good to kind of swing it, but when you go faster, you have to play it a little straighter. You 
may know that Jocko is famous for a fretless jazz bass, right? And this is a fretted jazz bass. Now I do have a fretless that I'll be playing in this video as well, my 1980s Ibanez musician. Jocko famously had a Fender jazz bass that he pulled the frets out of. So take this neck pickup, roll it back, and you've got Jocko. And if we take a look back at the pedal board, I'm using a bit of subtle compression, and then I've created a patch in the Line 6 HX Stomp to get a lot of the sounds that I really associate with Jocko. I've got a really cool doubler sound that I'll use for Continuum. Then I'm using the vibrato setting in the Plastic Chorus to emulate Jocko's MXR rack mount delay with modulation that he used. Then the key component here is I have an acoustic 360 amp and cab simulation in a separate path. So I'm blending a bit of clean sound and then running through this excellent acoustic 360 emulation. Next up is Come On, Come Over featuring Sam and Dave on vocals. And here Jocko is playing a fretted jazz bass and really flexing his amazing 16th note syncopation that he became so known for. <laughs> I mean, it's such a classic line. Check it out. A little slower. For the longest time, I thought it went. And then just the same thing here. But it doesn't. It goes. And then. Ah, from that third of C. The minor third of C. So of course there's that iconic main riff, but the chorus bass line is maybe the secret MVP of this tune. Cool, it's so cool. All right, let's just break this down a little slower. The whole thing is just based on these two phrases. And I have to say, when I started to tackle this tune, that section just sounded impossible to me. I was like, I don't know, I'm never gonna learn it. But here's the deal. Let me break it into two really simple to digest chunks and you'll be able to tackle it too. So without all of the ghost notes and approach notes, it's really just two phrases. The first one is this. Do that. Sometimes with Jocko, every bar is a masterpiece. So it is worth digging into this to even just learn this phrase. Take it around the bass. <laughs> it's part of Jocko's vocabulary, right? So that's the first phrase. And now the second phrase is this. Mm. Let's put the two together. Now there's a couple of approach things, right? And that is just ghost notes, open A, and then two C sharps. Then we get to the back half where he makes that amazing transition back to the A section. Sounds like this. So same phrase just walks up to the F and then that's that same phrase. And that just blends seamlessly back to the top riff. Next up may be one of the most beautiful pieces ever written for the bass guitar, Continuum. And I need my fretless. Okay, I'm gonna play this tune for you and I promise I'm not gonna play over the top of it because I want to bask in the master at work. Oh, his phrasing. Ah, that release to the four chord. The triplet. His answers. Oh, the harmony. High risk maneuver. 
this and how he gets back. <laughs> the sound that he has going on on this tune is just magical. And word has it, I read this interview with him where he said that he doubled it. So he played it once and then he didn't listen to his first take and he just played it again and they were so lined up that they just mixed them both equal and so it almost sounds like a chorus but it's actually just double tracked so i perused the hx stomp and found this cool doubler patch now it's not exactly the same but it gets the spirit so we're gonna start with this open e right kind of get this open e drone going right and then to tell where my fingers are on an unlined fretless fingerboard. Thankfully, the good team at SBL has you covered because we have made a beautiful PDF workbook that you can download. The link is in the description and it is absolutely free. Next up is Kuru Speak Like a Child, which is based on this blazing fretless ostinato. String arrangement. If you take away the blazing speed and unbelievable articulation, the line isn't too terrible to get under your fingers. We have this nice slow tempo. Bring it up a little faster. Take this pattern around the bass, right? Make it your own. Next up is the stunning solo bass performance of Portrait of Tracy. It's a masterclass in harmonics. It's a masterclass in composition. This is a tune that Victor Wooten stayed up all night to learn. And I think that's cool. Ugh. beginning and that first phrase, right? But we won't go too far because it would take forever, but check it out. This thing that he plays at the beginning is a perfect way to learn your harmonics in this really like narrow two fret span. So a G right here, and that's on the fifth fret of the G string. And then you have three harmonics in this zone. You've got right on top of the fifth fret, you have right behind the fourth fret, not right on top, right on top. Doesn't sound quite so well, just a touch behind. And it just pow rings out. And then slightly in front of the third fret, 
That took me forever. I was playing it right on the third fret. It just couldn't really, it's like, why is that harmonic not? Oh, wow. So check it out, right on the fifth fret, behind the fourth, in front of the third. That was a huge unlock for me, right? And then it's like that on every string. So this intro riff, so beautiful. Just a pattern. And then into this. are so high stakes, right? Like arching your first finger up enough, right? To be able to get the harmonics. So you're using a claw grip here and then doing the same thing here. I kind of like to roll the G because I like to hear that chord, sort of like an arpeggio. And then this is the most high risk maneuver of all where you're fretting the B, reaching your pinky up. This is almost impossible. Right, and playing. So you're fretting B, reaching up and touching the sixth fret with your pinky, playing an E, and then playing B. So all four notes ring together. Oh, and then this, shutting it down back on the C again. on from there I mean this is an absolute beast and a masterpiece and you should spend some time and get to know this tune it will absolutely improve your playing next up back to the fretless and a track that often gets overlooked but it's one of my favorites because of its playfulness opus pocus Ooh, that half step rub in the steel drum listen to how Jocko interprets this uh. Are you kidding? <laughs> Typically, Jocko's intonation is incredible. And it's not that it isn't here, it's just that it purposefully isn't, right? He's really playing with the fretless and really making the most out of this sort of like C6 sliding between two notes. And it doesn't to me sound like he double tracked it. It sounds like he's just playing that two note figure like this. Right? Where, I mean, I don't know that that's how he did it, right? But what I'm doing, I'm playing this D flat figure, D flat, the five, the flat seven, and then I'm playing. <laughs> now, what I'm doing here, the target note to me is an F, but there's that amazing thing that happens, right, in the steel drum where there's like an E and an F together. And so I'm locking in my thumb on the G string at an F or roughly thereabouts and then sliding my third finger up to get that F and then sort of falling away, right? what I'm doing, thumb on the B flat, third finger on the B flat, getting them as in tune as I can. And then oh, you can just move them, right? It's really fun. 
tune thing right always coming back to land hopefully in tune at the d flat that brings us to okonkole e trompa i'm probably butchering that pronunciation but it's all good dude it's all good and i love the story that jocko told on this one because he said one day he was tuning right as you do and he said sounds like music to me ostinato and there's this horn part that just starts to sail <sighs> I'm kicking on the vibrato because a lot of times when Jocko would play this kind of thing live he would use that MXR delay rack mount delay that he had the rock horns right and we're just playing friends in the comments please in the comment section below talk to us about your actual journey with Jocko's music did you start out loving it did you start out hating it do you still hate it are you coming around did you meet him I mean it's so sad his life was cut tragically short right he was this bright shining star a household base name and let us know in the comments, your trajectory with this music. I certainly had one. I'm really happy that I came around. This video was incredibly fun and a beast to make. If this video brought you any value whatsoever, please like, subscribe, ring the bell. And if you wanna check out any more videos in the series of bass albums that changed music, we put a few up here for you to peruse. I have been Ian Martin Allison for SBL. See you in the next one.